In April 1940, the Polish industrial city of Łódź was given a name change by the Nazi occupiers. It became Litzmannstadt, as we can see from this newspaper of the 12th of April 1940. The Nazis gave German names to many places, but normally it was just a German form of a Polish or other name. Łódź already had a German form. It was, and is, Lodz. The city was renamed Litzmannstadt after General Litzmann, who had captured Łódź in the First World War. The Litzmann family comes from the area of Neuruppin, north of Berlin, and has a long history. In the middle of the 16th century, the family was already a landowning family, and two Berlin mayors came from it, Kaspar Litzmann in 1695 and Johann Joachim Litzmann, who was mayor from 1709 to 1712. The father of General Karl Litzmann was the owner of a glassworks and a forest estate in Neuglotzo in, on the Grosse Strecklinsee Lake. Karl Litzmann was born on the 22nd of January 1850 in Neuglobso. On the 1st of April 1867, he joined the Prussian army in Berlin as an officer cadet and was commissioned second lieutenant on the 9th of August 1868. He participated in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 to 1871, during which he was awarded the Iron Cross. After the war, he had various postings, including Dessau, Berlin, Neisse, Katowice, Stettin, Porzen, Gnesen, Marienburg, Kolmar, and Minden. He was promoted captain in 1880, major in 1887, lieutenant colonel in 1892, colonel in 1895, major general in 1898, Lieutenant General in 1901. On the 12th of September 1901, Karl Litzmann replaced L L Lieutenant General Georg von Reckenberg to become the head of the Prussian War Academy. In this role, he had arguments with the general staff, which led to him receiving early retirement. Compulsorily. He was then... 55 years old. However, he was still on the reserve and when the First World War broke out, Litzman was recalled and entrusted with command of the 3rd Guards Division on the 18th of October 1914. The 3rd Guards Division had already fought in the West and was one of those units transferred to the East at the end of August 1914 thus weakening the Schlieffen plan. Litzman thus took charge of the unit just before the Battle of Wuj, and it was here that he made a name for himself. German troops had advanced too quickly and were surrounded by the Russian army at Drezhina to the northeast of Wuj. A disaster loomed with at least 8,000 German troops caught in a pocket. The Russian army, expecting a large bag of prisoners, not only from Brzezina, but also in the continuing attacks, had 60 trains waiting between Skirnevica and Warsaw to take them into captivity. Litzman was probably not the greatest general in the German army. He argued with his more cautious superior, Reinhard von Schleffer Boyadel. Litzman was more reckless, and he was prepared to take chances. Maybe he didn't plan as well. He risked all his troops on a frontal attack, and luck had it that this was where the Russian strength was weakest and lacked reserves. Advancing in temperatures of around minus 11 degrees centigrade, Litzman led his troops through the forest of Gaukovec, which not only saved those who were surrounded, but also led to the fall of Wuj two weeks later. 
This is the point where he led his troops across the railway line between Wuj and Kolushki. And this is how it appeared at the time in this heroic illustration. In this painting we can see him leading his troops sword in hand. That is the legend. The truth is that he was then 65, ill and did not carry a sword. However, it's the stuff of legend and how legends are born. For this action, he was awarded the Paul le Mérite on the 29th of November 1914 and given the honorary title, the Lion of Chirginne. In 1915, Litzman was promoted to infantry general and was given command of the 40th Reserve Corps. He participated in the Second Battle of the Mazurian Lakes and advanced to Kovno, where he captured the fortress, which was considered impregnable. For this, he received the oak leaves for the Paul Merit on the 18th of August 1915. He turned down the title of nobility offered by the Kaiser. His unit continued to press east until it reached Vilnius in mid-September 1915. The following summer, he was transferred south to the Volnia region of what was to become Eastern Poland after the war, where he successfully defended a section of the front near Koretnica Shelvov, which was under threat by a numerically superior Russian force. His troops were also later engaged in the Apuseni region of the Carpathian Mountains, and in August 1917, he headed Grupa Stanislaw as they battled the Russians in eastern Galicia. Following Russia's exit from the war, General Litzman and his 40th Reserve Corps were transported in January 1918 to the Western Front, where they became part of the Grupa Suches and were to fight in support of the 6th Army. Owing to bad health, Litzman felt he was unable to carry out his duties as a field commander and he requested retirement in August 1918 and he was replaced by Paul Grunert. However, in November 1918 the Kaiser once again requested General Litzman's service to take charge of security forces in Berlin. Litzman was unable to fulfil this task as no military units were available. Shocked by the German defeat in 1918 and the peace conditions, Litzman rejected the Republic and became involved with nationalist politics. In his memoirs, published in 1927 and 1928, he declared that the parliamentary system had failed a national rebirth required a return to the Bismarckian spirit. A new leader, who had not yet appeared, would save Germany and the German people from their misery and restore the monarchy. Karl Litzmann joined the Nazi party in 1929 after having joined the SA. He put his reputation as a general of the World War in the service of the party and appeared as a campaign speaker. In 1932 he was elected to the Prussian State Parliament which he opened as senior president. With the dissolution of the State Parliament in October 1933 his mandate expired. In the Reichstag election of November 1932, the last free election of the Weimar Republic, he was elected to the Reichstag and was allowed to open it as his most senior member. By then, he was 82. In his speech of the 6th of December 1932, he accused his former commanding officer and now Reich President, Paul von Hindenburg, of not being clear about the situation in Germany and called for Hitler to be appointed Chancellor. No sooner had he been elected than he resigned his parliamentary seat on the 15th of December 1932, limiting himself to his seat in the Prussian State Parliament. 
in the Nazi-controlled election of the 5th of March 1933, he was re-elected to the Reichstag, but once more resigned on the 2nd of April 1933, again due to his mandate in the state parliament. After the totally unfree election in November 1933, he was once again a member of the Reichstag, a post he held until his death in 1936. From July 1933, he was a member of the Prussian State Council, appointed by Hermann Goering. Litzmann was devoted to Hitler. On the 2nd of July 1934, immediately after the Night of the Long Knives, he stood by Hitler and spoke on his behalf. Litzmann died in 1936. He was not buried in the Tannenberg Memorial, as might have been expected, but nonetheless his funeral in Neuglobso was staged as a state event. After the annexation of the Vaterland, the former Polish cities of Łódź and Brzezina were given German names in honour of Karl Litzmann. It seems as though Brzezina was originally to be named Litzmannstadt, although a commission went there and decided it was not good enough to bear the name of the general. Therefore Brzezina became Lohenstadt, the city of the lion, after the lion of Brzezina. Both reverted to their original names after the end of the occupation. It was not just the towns that did not keep his name. The Berlin Friedrichsreal Gymnasium, where Litzmann had graduated from high school in 1866, had his name from 1938 before it was named a Leibniz school after World War II. A street in Passau was also named after him during the Nazi period. Karl Litzmann was made an honorary citizen of the town of Neureupen in 1925. This honorary citizenship was revoked in 2007 due to his support for Hitler. However, his honorary citizenship of another town lasted longer. Rheinsberg is located around 20 kilometers north of Neureupen. In 1915, Karl Litzmann received honorary citizenship due to his victory at Brzezina. In 1929, a war memorial was inaugurated in the town. However, Litzmann was not allowed to open it under the Reich war flag. Only the flag of the Weimar Republic was permitted. As a result, Litzmann angrily returned his honorary citizenship. However, following the Nazi seizure of power, the Rheinsberg City Council reacted immediately. On the 30th of March 1933, they decided to reappoint Litzman as an honorary citizen, and on 3rd of April 1933, the mayor agreed. The certificate was issued on the 31st of October 1933. On the 15th of January 1934, Litzman informed the Rheinsberg mayor, Walter Leibel, that he was accepting honorary citizenship. There seems to have been some kind of administrative mix-up. The town council learned in 2016 that he was still an honorary citizen of Rheinsberg. On discovering the error, the council was quick to remove his name. So I hope that you found this interesting. I've got many more videos on both world wars, early Nazis and indeed the history of the Wuj region, so you might want to subscribe.